We now move on to 2.3. The graph below shows the levels of two hormones that are secreted by the pituitary gland during the menstrual cycle. Ladies and gentlemen, you are always in your prelim paper one, in your final paper one, you are going to, I'm, I'm positive, get diagrams of the graphs relating to the hormones. Remember there are four hormones. There are two that are produced by the ovary, that's estrogen and progesterone, and there's two produced by the pituitary gland, and we've got them here. We've got hormone A and hormone B, and they are going to be luteinizing hormone, and we're going to have follicle stimulating hormone. Now we know that these hormones are also abbreviated to LH and FSH. If a question asks you to identify or name the hormone, write the whole name out. Afterwards, you can use the abbreviation. So we know that on our x-axis, we've got time and it's divided up into days, 28 days of a very average or generalized menstrual cycle. Over here, we've got hormone levels going from low to high, and we've got two hormones drawn onto the graph. State two functions of hormone B. We have to identify what hormone B is. Here we go. Hormone B and hormone B is in fact luteinizing hormone. So what are some of the functions of luteinizing hormone? And it's linked to the fact that luteinizing hormone peaks on day 14. And what do we remember happens on day 14 of our average cycle? We are looking at ovulation. So two functions of luteinizing hormone is going to be to stimulate ovulation. It has a direct impact on the ovary for ovulation. And because it's being produced in such high levels, it is also going to stimulate the, the, uh, the ovary to produce the ovarian hormones. We said that there are four hormones and that the ovarian hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And they are produced directly from the ovary. And why does the ovary start producing these hormones? Well, the ovary starts to produce them under the influence of luteinizing hormone. Explain why a female who is struggling to get pregnant may be given pills containing hormone A as a treatment. And what is our hormone A? Hormone A is follicle stimulating hormone. And look at the name. It is a hormone that is going to stimulate the production or the development of follicles. So why would a woman who is struggling to get pregnant get FSH as a possible treatment? And look here, we have three marks. And this is definitely an application question. We need to know what follicle stimulating hormone does. So Follicle stimulating hormone is going to stimulate or cause follicles. And remember what the follicles are. The follicles are or is the structure of little cells that's around the oocyte. It's going to cause these follicles to develop. 
into secondary follicles and it's going to stimulate the development of the oocyte and cause it to eventually become an ovum. So why would a person who is struggling to get pregnant get FSH? Because it's going to cause follicles to develop. So why? What's the point of that? Inside the follicle is the ovum or the oocyte that's going to develop into an ovum so that we have viable ova for fertilization. And we'll find that fert uh, drugs that are fertility treatments like extra FSH might actually produce a couple of mature follicles with their ova at a time instead of just one. And so this is going to increase the chances of viable ova being available for fertilization. And there we are, we've got our three marks. Will her levels, uh, why? Why will she have her levels of hormone B constantly monitored? Remember we said that hormone B is luteinizing hormone and we know that that is going to stimulate ovulation. So if she has LH monitored or checked constantly, her doctor or her will be able to work out when ovulation has taken place and then that is going to be considered the best time for uh, intercourse. And if she has sex at that time, that is going to increase her chances of fertilization. So we've not only increased the targets by stimulating with follicle stimulating hormone, we are going to make sure that the sperm is in the right place at the time that the targets are liberated from the ovary. And our last part of the question for 2.3 is explain how the levels of hormone A on days, and remember, let's just write this in, this is estrogen, on days 0 to 5 will differ in a pregnant female. Let's go right back here. We see that from days 1 to 5, estrogen levels climb. Now, in a pregnant woman, do you remember that after ovulation, we had the production of another hormone called progesterone. And that progesterone ensured that the endometrium was thick and healthy. If implantation took place and if there was a pregnancy and high levels of progesterone are going to work as a negative feedback for estrogen. So in a pregnant woman, how will, how will the levels of estrogen differ? We would say that in a pregnant woman, our levels of estrogen are going to be much lower. There's one mark. And the reason for that is they are, or the levels of estrogen is suppressed by high levels of progesterone. And throw in that negative feedback mechanism so that you really impress your marker. And there is our third point.